did, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that was quick. Yes. Hello, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Gary. I'm Lisa. Hey, our top story today is the top three Google searches for real estate. Top three things. What do you think they are? There, people are searching on Google, on Google. Well, you're in luck. We're gonna tell you. Number one is when is the housing market gonna crash? That search is up 2,500 percent. Number two, why is the market so hot? And number three, how much over asking should I offer when I'm making an offer? So let's jump into those three top questions and give you the answers to that right now. Oh my gosh. Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> That's us, the experts. Of course it is. Okay, so when is the housing market going to crash? The search is up 2,500%. What do you say? And what say you? Well, you know, the signs of a bust, uh, we just don't see, see that. But if you're looking for signs of a bust, one would be over speculation. Well, we have that. And rapid rise in prices, we have that. Low down payment, we don't have that this time. Right. The down payments are double what they were 18 months ago. And I think part of that uh, calculation when they do the averages is we have a lot of all cash offers in the market right now versus, you know, in the crash when people were putting no money down and anyone could get a loan and they weren't um, really getting quality borrowers at that time, which is what caused the bust, but now that is not the case. Um, you have to be fully underwritten and really have the qualifications to buy a home, and a lot of things are going out all cash, so that's the market we're in now. So that is decidedly different than the first two, where we do have the speculation and we do have rapid increase in prices. Yes. However, the loans are in a totally different category. Like Lisa was saying, we've got a lot of cash in the market. We've got a lot of things happen that haven't happened in the past. In fact, we've been doing this a long time, and this is the most unusual market that we've ever seen. Right. There's always a market. It's always something, and it's always something different. But this is the market we're in right now. People are buying and selling and um, making decisions to do things in the real estate market every day. Um, another thing that's different from the bust 10 years ago is there were a lot of adjustable rate mortgages in the marketplace then, and we just aren't seeing that now. Interest rates are so low that people are taking a fixed rate mortgage because they can and it's low, and why not? Uh, so that is also a difference between then and now. There were a lot of different loan programs on the last bust that just are not existent today. People were paying interest only. Oh my gosh, on one of the houses we owned, we had a fixed 10 years and then it went to interest only and then it went to amortization over the next 10 years i mean it was the weirdest loan product ever but we signed right up it was crazy <laughs> and it, anyway that needless to say we got that one refinanced as soon as the rates were good we cleaned that one up and most people realize today that the rates aren't going to be any lower than they are right now so a 30-year fixed note 15-year fixed note, 10-year fixed note, it's fixed. So that's going to be your payment for the term of the loan. I know. I think the rate on that was like 6% then? 6, six and a half? It was. I think it was. And it, it was a non-conforming loan, so it wasn't just as easy when everybody else was refinancing. They were like, well, what is this? And it was like, <laughs> yeah, well, we kind of liked it at the time. <laughs> so anyway, that's number one. Number two is... Number two is, why is the market so hot number one reason is migration people are moving around and moving um, all over the place like they never have be before with uh, with the pandemic they've been able to work from home they can now move and not live near their work so it has created a huge migration of people bigger than we have ever seen yeah we're going to say on this one right here why is the market so hot we're going to say inflation I don't know if you filled up your car lately or went to the grocery store, tried to buy a house, tried to buy some lumber. Everything is increased in price. Everything. How about some gasoline? Yes. Yes, you it is. Tried to buy gasoline in California? 
Yes, I think, I don't know if we have the top prices in the country, but it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not too long ago, uh, we were in Arizona, and the price per gallon was $2. Like $2? $2 yeah. cheaper per gallon yeah. in Arizona versus California. That's a big, big step up. Yeah, especially when we're filling up the truck. It's <laughs> a big difference. Um, number three, um, at the beginning of April, 42% of the real estate transactions were all cash. So that is a huge jump in how many are being sold um, over the asking price and for cash. Okay, not to be confused, this is number three or number two. Question no, no, uh, number two, third reason. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I got confused right there. I thought, oh no, we went right into number three. And the two <laughs> housing markets, the hottest housing markets, what uh, what, uh, what do you think they are right now? Is oh, I know. You told me. I did. Number one? Is... I was just there. Phoenix. Phoenix. Number two is San Diego, if you can believe that. San Diego and Ventura, too, is so hot. People are moving out of the Bay Area and out of L.A., and they're going to... The lesser populated, even though I don't even call San Diego that, but I may, maybe less than LA, but San Diego. And number three is Seattle. So those are the three hottest mar markets right now. Yeah, people can't wait to get out of the bigger cities into the smaller cities, and the small towns are just absolutely being overwhelmed right now with so many people moving in. Mm -hmm. Another reason why the market is so hot right now is the empty nesters that are coming back that flew the coop not empty nesters well they're in the market too they're ready to be empty net nesters but they're not because their kids came home during the last year but now they're flying the coop again so they are out there looking for property looking for homes and looking for rentals well i guess they were empty nesters right and then the kids moved the nest back came back. the nest came back <laughs> <laughs> and now they're getting ready to fly again, so empty nest, full nest, empty nest again. Yes, yeah, so those people are out in the marketplace, and now those empty nesters are ready to downsize. The boomers are ready to get out there and downsize. So, turns out the statistics right now, 50% of the U.S. population over 12 years old has been vaccinated. So, I think that's going to give a lot of the seniors and people that have been uh, home wanting to move on and wanting to move closer to family the comfort it's going to take to list their home and get moved on. Yeah, I think the people that were, uh, let's say, afraid, had fear that mm -hmm. they didn't want people with COVID or potentially have COVID come into their house. Now that we're at the 50% level, I think the fear level has subsided substantially. Yes. Yes. So it's, it's uh, of course, we have all the protocols in place uh, for showing homes uh, right now, so it's not anything that you should be afraid of. If you're thinking about selling your home, give us a call. We'll talk to you about it, walk you through it. Um, and now's a great time. It's crazy out there. It's a seller's market like we've never seen before. Absolutely, absolutely. Our properties get multiple offers? Multiple offers. The average, I think, is four offers on a property, really regardless of price point. So that's a lot. That gives you options. <laughs> it does, and if we go to nationally, how many properties are getting above list price offers? Lots of them. I think it's 42%. 42%. <laughs> right That's, there on the tip of your tongue. Because, well, yeah, go, yep, yep, we're not going to go down that. Um, just go down that road right now. Um, there was just an article, too, in the Wall Street Journal about people leaving the big cities and going to smaller cities, and it's really having a big impact on smaller areas because people are flooding from the cities out into the smaller uh, uh, communities nationally. And there's a really good article about it in the Wall Street Journal um, that big cities, leaving big cities and overwhelming small towns, if you want to Google that and read it. Well, I think the biggest thing that's overwhelming the small towns is people are leaving the big city. They want high-speed internet access because even though they're living in a small town, they're probably still working in a big city. Right. And I think ultimately, travel expenses are going to go up for the people because every now and then, you kind of need to get together as a group. It's just very beneficial. Right, absolutely. And our third most searched uh, Google question in real estate right now is how much over asking should I offer? 
Well, the first response to that is if you have a very experienced seasoned uh, realtor like us, we can help you navigate the market because prices, homes and prices change every day and it can change street to street. They can. Now, what we generally, as a rule, tell people is just, in this market, offer as much as you feel comfortable offering. Don't hold anything back. I mean, once the property closes and it becomes public knowledge, recorded information, then everybody knows what it closed for, including the potential buyers that we represent. And they say, oh my gosh, it closed for $5,000 more than I offered. Well, I would have offered that or 5000 even over that. So I would have offered an additional 10000 over what I offered. And Lisa and I always go back and say, do it now versus saying if I would have, could have, or should have. Because when it closes and you see that price and it's over what your absolute top was, you can at least have solace and say, hey, you know, I offered absolutely everything I could offer. The wind, the moon, the sun, and the stars. Put it all in the offer. And guess what? We didn't get it. No worries. Right. So that's that's always what we like to say is, you know, put your highest and best foot forward of what you want to pay. Because in this market especially, there's no guarantee you're going to get a counter offer. Because uh, they're getting such overwhelmingly amazing offers uh, that yours might not even get countered. So uh, we have some tips and strategies to try and help put yours to the top of the pile. So if you're thinking about shopping in this market, let us know because we have all kinds of things that we can do to help your buyer's strategy be successful. That we do. We have a load in years and absolutely brand new experience to bring with us. So we're always available. We love to talk about real estate. So if you're thinking about buying or selling, you can always find us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Correct.